All right, everybody, you should have some paper to take notes on this. Now, I've been telling you that you need a math notebook, but if you don't have one, we will pause the video so that you can pick up some paper right now. Okay, when we have to solve percent problems, they can be kind of confusing. Unless you remember this very simple little trick, is over of, is over of. I'll show you some examples. I'd like you to write down the problem and we'll pause so that you can try to solve it after we get past the first one. But you've got to write down the problems. I'm collecting these notes, so do this. You can solve all of these percent problems by setting up a proportion. And it looks like this. You've got the number that you're given for the percent over 100, because that's how percent works. It's out of 100 parts then is over of as your other ratio. I'll show you. Here's the part that you write down. 25% of what number is 6? Now I just have to remember this proportion. So they give me 25%, which means I plug in 25. The 100 always stays the same. and it goes is over of. So they tell me is 6, which means 6 goes on the top, and of what number, of what number is my variable, the number I'm trying to find. So now I solve this like I would solve any proportion. 6 times 100 equals 600, divided by 25, x equals 24. And I can check my answer using number sense. They're asking me 25% of what number is 6. So I can ask myself, well, is 6 25% of 24? Why, yes, it is. I've done that correctly. Next problem. Write this down. What percent of 40 is 28? So I set it up. The 100 is always the same. It's a proportion, so that's two ratios written as fractions. They're asking me what percent, so that's going to be my variable, the number that I'm trying to find. Is 28 of 40? So what percent of 40 is 28? I can do 28 times 100 divided by 40, and I will get x equals 70. And does that make sense? Is 28 70% of 40? Why, yes, it is. I've done that correctly. Now take a look at your answer. Another way of testing this, I'm going to set up the answer. 70 over 100 equals 28 over 40. These are equivalent fractions. I mean, proportions are just equivalent fractions. So one way I can test it is to simplify both of these and see if I have the right numbers. 7, 70, and 100 can both be divided by 10. So that would give me 7 tenths. And 28 and 40 can both be divided by 4. So that would also give me 7 tenths. So I did my math correctly. Next problem. 15% of 60 is what number? Write down the problem, try it, and I will go over the solution. I'm given the 15%. The 100 always stays the same. There's my equal sign of 60, I know that of goes on the bottom, and is what number? There's my variable, and is goes on the top. So 60 times 15 divided by 100, I'm left with x equals 9. So I ask myself, is that a reasonable answer? Could 9 be 15% of 60? Well, I know 0% of 60 would be 0. 
and 50, not 15, but 50% 50 of 60, that would be half of 60, so that would be 30. So yeah, 9 is pretty reasonable. That makes sense to me. I hope you're seeing that is over of makes these pretty simple. We're working our way up to word problems. So even then, I think you'll be able to see the is over of relationship. What percent of 20 is 18? Write it down. Try it. I will go over the solution. 100 is always the same for these. I'm asked what percent, so I don't know yet. That's my variable. Of 20, so of goes on the bottom, that's 20. Is 18, is goes on the top. So 18 times 100, that 18 times 100, divided by 20, I get x equals 90. So 90% of 20 is 18. Yes, that is a reasonable answer. Okay, on to the word problems. This is what we need to be able to solve. We understand is over of, I hope. You don't have to write down this full problem, but I want you to try this problem on your own. Mr. Thompson has 33 math students. 21.21%, so 21 and 21 hundredths of a percent, have A's. How many of Mr. Thompson's math students have A's? So try it. The hundred is still the same. We just have to figure out which numbers that we're given go where in our is over of proportion. So give it a try. So I have 33 math students. That's my, my total. So the total would go on the bottom. 21.21% of that total have A's, and I'm asked how many students have A's. So this is kind of a key concept here, that when we set up a proportion for percentage, we have the number out of 100. 100 is the total. When you look at these problems, you're going to have a number out of the total. So I can do a little bit of math here. 33 times 21.21. So I get 699.93. I've got to divide that by 100, and I end up with 6.9993. But since the question is how many math students, that wouldn't make sense to have six students and then a fraction of a student. So I would round this up to seven. X is seven students and your answer should have labels. should be able to know that this is seven students. Another question. Again, you don't have to write it down, but you do have to try it. Mr. Thompson bought a book for 85% of the original price. If he paid $17, what was the original price? Give it a try. So here we go. I'm given 85. The 100 is always the same. So I can look at this as um, kind of like a smaller number on top and the total on the bottom. Maybe you picked out of the original price, and you know that if you paid 85% of the original price, you paid less than what the original price was. So what I'm trying to find is the original price, and I paid $17. So 17 times 100 divided by 85, x equals $20. I paid $20. So now you're going to have some practice problems uh, as well as word problems. So do your best, and they will be, um, hopefully, we'll have time to go over the answers before we leave here.